This is the 3rd of November 2016. We're at Vincent Corporation in Tampa, Florida. Um, we're going to test some uh, waste that came from a decanter, decanter sludge. Uh, decanter sludge really cannot be, uh, these are all screw presses we're looking at. We're over in the test areas. Little presses over in there. Lots of screw presses here. And um, here's the one we're going to try. But uh, it's going to be a failure. Uh, that's the way it, it works with decanter sludge. Uh, uh, sludge that's been thickened in a centrifuge or decanter, uh, all the free water has been removed. You can't get out any more water um, with a screw press, except if you blend a press aid with it. So uh, here was the sludge that we received. It's a lot thicker than uh, normal decanter sludge from uh, uh, normally it's a lot wetter coming out of a centrifuge and when I take this and squeeze it in my fist all I get it's like mashed potatoes I'm not getting any liquid to separate not a film of water between my fingers and my palm I've got a little moisture there just a faint amount so the quick test on this is to the soft test Push the material in a cotton cloth and see how many drops you can get out. So we took a shop rag, pushed it some in there, and what I got out was quite a few drops. But in comparison, it's not enough to make a difference. Okay, I unfolded the, the cotton cloth, and you can see, you know, we didn't get much water out. So the next thing we did is we took cotton seed hulls, and because they're the least expensive, and this is a blend of cotton seed hulls with the decanter sludge, and we squeezed that. After oh, it took a, it was real hard to blend this, but we got it blended. We're actually looking at a blend of cotton seed hulls and this sludge, and we squeezed it in the fist and got out two drops. Uh, most of the water that we were releasing got squeezed right into the cotton seed holes. So we tried a more expensive and more effective press aid, ground wood, ground wood fiber. We blended that in with the uh, sludge. And that's what it took a lot of effort to blend it that way. Squeezed it in the fist and... Um, oh, that's where I got out the two drops. Uh, when I did it with the cotton seed holes, I got out no drops. That's a correction. Uh, the, what water was released was sucked right back into the cotton seed holes. We didn't get any water when we squeezed that one. We tried it with wood fiber, and sure enough, it was a little more effective. We got out two lousy drops. Uh, anyway, we're going to get a try on this screw press. We have a, a motor hooked up with a VFD. And uh, so we vary the speed, we're going to slow it way down. Uh, motor, gearbox, screw in the inlet hopper, our screen, and uh, let the water out, and a discharge cone. You can see the slots are pretty narrow on the inside here, about uh, 15, 20 thousandths of an inch wide. Uh, we've got an air cylinder to apply back pressure. It will, the air cylinder will push in this bronze discharge door and uh, to create back pressure. What I anticipate will happen is we won't squeeze any water out of this. Instead, we will extrude it in ribbons through the slots of this screen. That's a prediction. Okay, we've turned on the press. Um, I'm going to set the hertz lower. It'll be slower. That is foam, uh, pa styrofoam coming out, packing material for motors and stuff that we did here. Uh, well, we cleaned out the press by feeding the styrofoam to it. I'm running at about one bar, and uh, I've got, when I flip the handle on the air regulator, you'll see the uh, cone go shut. Anyway, that's how that works. Okay, we're getting going here. This one's called Gorilla Hair. Press that day before yesterday or yesterday. And we're feeding the material into the press. And you can 
see where the screw is grabbing a hold of it and pushing it into the screened area. Um, I'm going to open the phone again. And there you can see the material, styrofoam cleaning material coming out. So it feeds through the press. I'll run the cone back in at minimum pressure. And so far, I've got not a drop of water coming through any place, but I see a ribbon of material starting to extrude through the screen. I'll increase the air pressure. See, we're not getting any separation of water and solid. I'm just cranking up the air pressure here, 40 psi, 45, there's three bars. So I get a thinner ribbon coming out, and I get more extrusion through the screen, but I'm not getting any water solid separation. What's happening is there's four kinds of water. If I took this stuff and uh, diluted it in a big drum of water, uh, there'd be free, uh, free water and I can drain that out real easily. That would leave me particles of corn, uh, assuming I agitate the barrel uh, real well. Uh, the free water would drain out, and then I get it down where there's interstitial water, which is water that is uh, bound, uh, uh, that is, uh, you know, it's in between the tiny particles of corn. Uh, next, if I could get rid of that interstitial water, there's the bound water, electron binding, uh, the charge of a H2O molecule is attracted to the solids. A press can't really get that out. Then finally, after that, you've got the chemical water, water of hydration. The, the molecules of this stuff are made of uh, uh, H2O hydrocarbon chains. And so that, sure, this stuff is probably 80% moisture, but there's no free water, barely any interstitial water. Uh, the bound water just doesn't break loose, and the uh, chemical water, you've got to, got to heat the material to break the molecules out. Anyway, as predicted, a uh, complete failure. Uh, we were going to take this material and blend a press aid with it, uh, but uh, if it had been soupy decanter sludge, we could have done that pretty easy. In fact, we got a cement mixer right over here where we uh, routinely will blend, blend press aids into uh, samples that are, need press aid, like apples. You put apples in a press, you'll get applesauce through the screen. You uh, blend uh, some of this, these press aids you saw in, a, in with the apples, and you'll get apple juice through the screen. Well, this stuff, there's no blending. It, it is, would be murder, uh, impossible to blend the, these fibers uh, into this material. Uh, so that's why we can't do the uh, test we promised to do of uh, running this with the press aid blended in. Here's something else. This is hydrated lime. Uh, all the citrus feed mills in the world blend hydrated lime with orange peel to make it pressable. That is, you can't squeeze water out of orange peel unless you mix hydrated lime and get a reaction. So we mixed the hydrated lime with this taco material. I gave it 15 minutes. We had to wet the hydrated lime. It takes wet hydrated lime and orange peel, uh, blend it for a chemical reaction, then squeeze it, and you'll get a stream of water out. Well, that's what came out of my hand. No water, just a, an extrusion of uh, like mashed potatoes. So hydrated lime and the taco waste does not work. Uh, on the way to the lab, this is the uh, screw department lights from the screws. We take these screws and weld them on the shafts to uh, more flights, make screws, and uh, this is where we uh, weld out screws, tapping screws galore, and uh, so that's what the screw department looks like. Now this is assembly department. These are uh, 16 inch presses. They will be a production run. Uh, if you can imagine this monster, uh, that, even the, everything there is stainless steel, even that base frame is all stainless. Normally we make the base frames as you can see here, there's frames for another half a dozen press 
devices. Uh, those are all carbon steel. In assembly, they're putting together filter machines and some fiber filter. Uh, and assembly work, uh, one down there, and one, two, three, four, five, at least a half a dozen presses uh, being assembled here today. Here we are trying to feed this material to the chickens. Um, they're coming, and uh, he seems to like it. Anyway, uh, we have a customer, a dairy farm, in the outskirts of L.A., and they have a fleet of trucks uh, that go, a fleet of trucks, that go around the dairy farms in the L.A. area. They go to all the taco factories, and the boy, there's a tortilla factories, there's a lot of them, and they get all the reject, out of date, bad dough, things like that. They go to some factories that uh, juice oranges, uh, three or four, and they'll pick up all the waste, the uh, waste orange peel, uh, bread from out-of-date bread, um, and uh, waste from tortilla factories, and uh, they feed it to their cows. They have 5,000 cows, so, uh, but there's an awful lot of uh, tortillas made in the L.A. area. Uh, the chickens don't seem to go for it particularly. Cows would love this stuff. Okay, we uh, <clears throat> have a precision scale, raised to a thousandth of a gram. Overnight oven, dried out the samples at less than uh, about 90 centigrade. <clears throat> this is what the material looked like after dried out. Uh, moisture analysis about as expected, 80% uh, uh, moisture content for the material which we received. And as you saw, uh, there was no way to